I'm gonna tell you how it's still possible to run a successful STR now. Hey, my name is Michael Crockett and I'm a short-term, mid-term rental business owner here in Sacramento, California. I built a six-figure business in 14 months and I'm gonna show you that it's still possible to do it today and here's what you need to do in your STR to make sure that you're doing the same. A successful short-term rental is one that is competitive, it's streamlined and offers guests a consistently positive experience. But before we even get into what you should do, let's talk about some of the things that you absolutely should not do. The first thing that you shouldn't do is not clean consistently, right? People, when they come to your space, the guests, when they come to your space, they're gonna want a clean place. And you're gonna have to make sure that either yourself or your team who's doing the cleaning for you is cleaning every single corner of that house or that place consistently every time. That means making sure the beds are laundered and made the right way, coffee is filled, everything on the floor is cleaned up, all the towels are folded or maybe rolled on the beds. These things matter, they're important and people expect them when they come to your space. So clean consistently every single time and give your guests the experience that you're promising them. So how long does it usually take up to set up your STR? If you're doing it yourself and the first time, you're probably doing a lot of stuff on your own, right? So the first time you set up, including all your furnishings, giving all, getting everything delivered to the home, it's probably gonna take about a month to five weeks to get your property all set up. That includes, like I said, everything that needs to be in the home, the beds, your sheets, your linens, your towels, your coffee machine, all your appliances. If you're doing it yourself, give yourself at least five weeks to get everything set up the right way. That way you're not rushing and you're learning the process as well, right? As an operator, your job is going to be documenting these processes, getting things set up so that you can teach other people how to do it so that you can scale and get some of your time back as a business owner. So one thing that I do all the time before I get into an STR is to make sure I've done all my research up front, right? To make sure that that STR is gonna be a successful one. So that means utilizing your data in the market, using tools like AirDNA, doing your research and doing your homework upfront so that you already know revenue, revenue wise what that property is gonna yield. The one thing that I dedicate the most attention to in my STR business is serving my customer, right? Serving my guests. I make sure that every single STR that we set up specifically serves that customer. Now my company is called Art House ABB. So we're all artists and we cater to the artistic and creative community. So a lot of our Airbnbs are set up just like that. Like many art galleries, people love to come and see the art and support artists. So that's what we do is we serve that type of clientele. We serve the guest that likes that experience. And on top of that, by serving a specific guest, we're able to separate ourselves from the competition and stay competitive in this market, which now in 2023 is exactly what you need to do as an SCR operator. Hey, by the way, if you're finding this information useful, you should be, go ahead and subscribe, really appreciate it. Here's where people go wrong in setting up their short terminal business. The first thing they do is think that they're not gonna make any mistakes. You should prepare yourself that there are gonna be things that you do that aren't necessarily the best way or they're wrong. Make sure going into this that you know that mistakes are gonna happen. Be ready with an, an ability to problem solve those mistakes, right? To identify a root cause, and build a process to fix them and prevent them from happening in the future. Other things that are really simple that people kind of make mistakes about is your actual home, right? The STR that you're in and the things that you're putting into the STR. An example of that is the beds. The guests are gonna spend most of the time in the bed sleeping at night. So you have to make sure that your beds are comfortable ones. That means getting good mattresses, quality mattresses, testing them out yourself, right? I tell everyone who's starting up an STR business, when you fully furnish your place, Stay at night in your STR. See what it's gonna feel like for your customer and for your guests. That way, if the bed isn't comfortable or something's not right, you can fix it before they identify it, which is the worst thing to have happen. The beds are also important because you gotta remember, people are not just sleeping in the beds. <gasps> I know, it's kinda like, but hey, their beds are gonna be used. So make sure that they can stand up to the test of time. And of course, they're gonna be one of your biggest investments, right? Mattresses are not cheap. So make sure that they're gonna last for a long, long, long time. Really drilling down the mattresses, this is really important because again, this is gonna be one of your biggest investments. You gotta protect those things at all costs and they're gonna go through some nightmarish stuff, I'm telling you, right? Luckily, you're not gonna see it, but you're probably gonna see the aftermath. So anyways, you wanna make sure that you're protecting these as much as possible. Get a slip cover or a mattress cover just to protect them from any liquids or moisture, anything that might be, you know, some Kool-Aid or whatnot that might spill on the mattress. Those little cheap things, you know, that 20, 30 bucks on Amazon, 
they really protect some of your biggest investments and keep that same mentality when you're putting in other furnishings in your house. Your couches, chairs, dining tables, build in things that kind of protect them so that over time wear and tear doesn't beat them down as fast as they normally would. One of the trends that I see right now happening a lot is people wasting space, right? You got short terminals that are outfitted to accommodating people comfortably, but you don't have enough in there for them to use, right? In an effective way. So an example of this is a wasted opportunity to include a desk. A desk is something that a lot of people who travel for work are utilizing on a day-to-day -day basis. So if you got an empty corner or empty space in the bedroom, add another tool, right? That people can enjoy and use in the space. Another thing I see is huge closets, right? It makes no sense. In the short terminal space, people are only using your home for short periods of time. So they don't need to have huge closets where they're hanging a lot of clothes and belongings because guess what? They don't have it traveling with them. Repurpose those spaces to offer products or tools that people can actually use when they're staying in the spaces and they will appreciate you for it um, because you are thinking about their experience while they're, t while they're staying with you. You also wanna make sure that you're thinking for yourself and not just thinking about what's trending. If you're trying to catch up and do what everyone else is doing, you're not focused on what it is that you need to do to improve your own business, right? And setting it up to meet your goals. So don't lose track of what your vision is and don't get caught up in what everyone else is doing because you'll get confused really fast and you'll lose sight of what you originally wanted to do with your business. Some of the best practices that I've seen out there that really contribute to the overall success of the short-term rental business is building and reinforcing boundaries. What do I mean by that? It means safeguarding your time. You're gonna be a business owner, right? There are gonna be so many decisions that you need to make, so many people that you need to communicate with, so many things that you have to do every single day. Well, if you have no boundaries, your time can very quickly become everyone else's time. And at the end of the day, you've got not even enough time to go to sleep and that would really suck. So build in boundaries for yourself and for your time to make sure that you're using it the most effectively every single day and that your business is not sucking all the time and life out of you. One of the biggest pieces of advice that I really learned that turned my business around and helped me be successful is the idea of letting go of control. Not completely, but just enough to make sure that those boundaries that you built for protecting your time are ones that stay. That means trusting other people to be able to make decisions for you, trusting other people to take some of the control on, right? That is all part of being a successful business owner. Making sure that you are not in control of everything is the best way to see your business grow and scale the way you want it to. After all this information and all this feedback and information I'm giving you, I really want you at the end of the day just to take some action, right? I see so many hosts out there just get stuck and they get frustrated because there's too much information or even misinformation out there and it gets confusing. I know the feeling I was there too, but the best thing that I've seen other successful hosts do and myself is to take action. Get out there, find a property that you like and set up as a short-term rental. Identify the customer that you wanna serve and start going to serve them. Talk to people, communicate and network with people that are in your backyard already in this space. Take some action, stop thinking about it, stop analyzing and go out there and be successful because at the end of the day, it's exactly what you want to do and it's exactly what you can do. If what I said makes sense or you found this video useful, go ahead and subscribe. It really helps me out. 